Hello and welcome back to the Reapers with me Tanky. So what we've got here today for review is the progression of the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro series, the Neptune 3 Plus. Uh, firstly let me start with apologies to Elegoo. Uh, unfortunately Christmas has got in the way and so I'm a little bit late uh, posting this review up. But they haven't asked for any preferable treatments with this review so everything here is my own honest opinion. So what do we have here with this Neptune 3 Plus? Well, Elegoo have listened to the customer base and the demand for a larger form FDM printer. And they've come up with two offerings, uh, the 3 Plus that we've got here and the upcoming 3 Max, which has an even bigger build volume. Um, and that will be a, a welcome addition to the actual Neptune 3 family. So we can see with this larger form factor printer that Elegoo are going after the Creality CR10 customer base here. And this just builds on the initial amazing features that you get on the Neptune 3 Plus. Just with that, that big build volume of in the X and Y about 320 millimeters and then in the Z axis uh, 400 millimeter in build height itself. Uh, but you've still got the dual drive uh, hot end um, printer head and also you've got the magnetic base and the the amazing little touch screen. Uh, it's also got on it um, a couple of wheels on the uh, the edge to aid with the build leveling three on each side and that in conjunction with the auto bed leveling feature that comes as standard on the neptune 3 plus and pro series just makes bed leveling an absolute breeze to do so along with the auto bed leveling features we've also got all the same features that we had with the original Neptune 3 Pro with the dual drive extruder on the print head, the filament runout sensor in the center of the, the top of the frame here with the spool holder. Uh, we've also got the print after a power outage where the printer will just immediately pick up where it left off. Um, and we also have the 4.3 inch touch screen control panel on the, the side here which is really easy to navigate around and it's the standard fittings that you'd get on the the previous Neptune 3 Pro and the Neptune 3. One thing that Elegoo have had to do to compensate for the larger build volume is reinforce the z-axis just on the uh, the back here with a couple of bracing struts just to eliminate any wobble within the, the z-axis itself as the printer head goes up as you continue printing and that is rock solid there's no wobble in this at all as it's printing out of the way so generally uh, i found this to be an absolutely amazing machine uh, exactly the same as its predecessor the elegu Neptune 3 pro but one issue i did come across and this would also be relevant to the the pro itself is as i was testing i experienced a, a jam within the printer head itself and the only way to resolve this because there was no information about it was to put a 1.5 millimeter allen key down through the center of the print head after heating that up to 240 degrees centigrade and then forcibly pushing the filament out through the extruder elegoo themselves have said that they are going to update the faqs on the website about this and make sure that nobody else would struggle to, to find that information uh, if they ever experience that particular issue. But other than that, that's the only issue I've come across. And bearing in mind, this is a pre-production model of the uh, Neptune 3 Plus. One thing I did do was change out the standard 0.4 nozzle on this printer to the 0.6 and increase the build speed up to 180 millimeters a second and that is blisteringly fast it, it, we're talking near on resin speeds uh, printing here 
and that was a welcome improvement and something which to be fair is unheard of as as far as i know when it comes to fdm printers so i know what you're thinking tanky stop waffling on about how good this printer is and actually show us some of the results and because we're all in the flight sim community here um, i've been printing out a mosquito throttle quadrant uh, to expand my sim pit with and what we've got here is the name plate printed on standard settings and you can just see how clear and crisp all the details have come out and this is just at 0.2 layer height and it, it's absolutely amazing but whilst that's good you can go even finer uh, I ended up printing out the external body of this uh, this throttle quadrant at the finest possible setting that I could set it at and whilst yes it does take longer and this was before I upgraded the the nozzle to the 0.6 with the uh, the increased speed the quality of the actual print is unmistakable um, you, you'll be able to see here that all the lettering is super crisp there's barely any layer lines that you can see on this whatsoever so whilst it did take that little bit longer the quality of it is unsurpassed and it's just a fantastic result from this particular machine so let's come to my final thoughts on this particular printer itself can I recommend this printer? Yes and no. Um, I can recommend it because it is such a brilliant machine with all the points that I've pointed out uh, over the, the whole course of this review. But the no comes down to the fact that the max is just around the corner, which is going to give you just that bigger bit of build volume. And because of that, if your budget can't stretch to the the max sure go for the plus but if you can stretch to that max go for that because it's going to have exactly the same features and still be able to produce this amazing quality that we can see here so i've been tanky from the grim reapers and i hope to see things that you've been 3d printing for your sim pits very soon <laughs>